from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. It's a full-blown COVID-19 outbreak in the Henrico County jails, but there is some good news. And Henrico police need your help identifying a commercial robbery suspect. We'll have details about those stories and more in today's Henrico News Minute for Thursday, July 16th, 2020. It's brought to you today by Henrico Area Mental Health and Nathan's Roof Repairs. And now for the news. Well, the COVID-19 outbreak in Henrico County's jails has now expanded to more than 100 inmates and several staffers. Jail officials have tested 645 inmates and 125 of them have tested positive for the virus, according to Henrico Sheriff Elisa Gregory. Among 270 jail staff members, six have the virus. Another 393 inmates refuse to be tested. But the good news is that of the 125 who were positive, fewer than 10 have any symptoms, according to Gregory, and they have only mild symptoms. That group of 125 is quarantined together away from other inmates, and those who refuse testing are also quarantined separately from other inmates. Henrico County Manager John Vitolkis praised Gregory's ability to reduce by 768 the number of prisoners housed in the two jails this year alone, saying that without that reduction, it might not be possible to isolate three separate groups in the counties, Jail West and Jail East. Now, the county will continue to test all inmates who consent and also all staffers at the jails weekly, according to Vitolkis. Anyone with questions about family members who are in one of the county's jails should call the sheriff's office at 501-4570. Henrico County's seven-day COVID-19 positivity percentage continues to rise. As of July 11th, it reached 6.1% that day. The percentage hadn't exceeded 6% since June 28th, but despite the recent climb, the county's rate is still more than an entire percentage point lower than the statewide number. A total of 65 new confirmed cases in the county were announced Tuesday and Wednesday, bringing the total number to nearly 2,950 among about 42,700 PCR tests that have been conducted. That's an overall positivity percentage of 6.8%. The county's hospitalization count increased by 3 to 273, and its death count grew by 2 up to 175. The latest victims were all older than 60. A 70 year old Henrico woman died in a two car accident in Verina on Tuesday. The crash happened at about 2.45 in the afternoon at Darby Town Road and Turner Road according to police. First responders found that a Ford F-250 truck was traveling east on Darby Town and it struck the Nissan Altima the woman was driving that was attempting to turn onto Darby Town Road from Turner. The victim was Louise Edwards. She died at a local hospital. Speed and alcohol are not considered factors in the crash, according to police. Henrico police are seeking the public's help in identifying the man who robbed a business in the 3300 block of Williamsburg Road in eastern Henrico on Tuesday at about 3 p.m. The suspect walked up to an employee of a store, asked if he could purchase a black and mild. The suspect handed the clerk change to pay, and as the employee was counting the change. The suspect stepped behind the counter and told the victim to get on the floor. He then opened the cash drawer and took money out and placed it in his pockets, ordered the employee to the store closet, and left. You can see a picture of the man on our website, HenricoCitizen.com, by clicking Public Safety. He's described as a black male between 6 foot and 6 foot 3. And if you have any details about the case, police are asking you to call 501-5000 or 780-1000. As we all strive to do our part during this extraordinary time, Henrico Area Mental Health serves as your local and public mental health agency continuing to do its part. We all experience mental health challenges, especially during extreme challenging times. It doesn't matter your age, gender, race, or ethnicity. 
Each person is affected differently. If you're a resident of Charles City, New Kent, or Henrico counties, and you, a family member or friend or someone you know, may need someone to talk to about the mental health challenges being experienced. Do your part and call us at 804-727-8515. That's 804-727-8515. We're here to help. Remember, mental health is good health. Call Henrico Area Mental Health at 804-727-8515. That number again is 804-727-8515. This message comes to you from Henrico County CSB Prevention Services. Police cited a Hampton man at Richmond International Airport July 14th for bringing a 40 caliber revolver, a magazine with 12 rounds, and an additional loose bullet in his carry-on bag to the TSA checkpoint. It was the 11th time this year and second time in just five days that TSA officials had found a gun at the checkpoint. Last year it happened only 18 times all year. It also happened just 18 times in 2018. Anyone who brings firearms to a security checkpoint is subject to possible criminal charges. The TSA also has the authority to assess civil penalties of up to $13,333 for weapons violations. A traffic alert if you are traveling on I-64 East near Airport Drive next week. Beginning on July 22nd, VDOT will alter the traffic patterns there. It's working on a project to replace the bridges at the interchange. Beginning at 6 o'clock on July 22nd, all eastbound traffic on I-64 will switch over to a newly constructed bridge. And the new single exit 197 will remain open. There will be no changes to traffic flow on Airport Drive. The project is expected to be completed in late 2022. Freeman High School officials yesterday announced the 14-person mascot and nickname advisory committee that will provide input about the nickname Rebels to Principal John Marshall. The committee is composed of three students and 11 alumni and former staff members. That includes Andrea Baker, a alumna who graduated in the 70s and who was a faculty member until 2018. Rob Blankenship, a Freeman parent and alumnus from the 90s, the current band director of the school. Doug Clements, an alumnus from the 90s and current teacher and coach at the school. Suzanne Criswell, the Freeman director of student activities and a faculty member. Abak Kawaj, a Freeman alumna from the 2010s. Mark Lambert, an alumnus from the 90s. Jake O'Connor, an alumnus from the 2000s, a Hall of Fame inductee at the school. Larry Parpart, a current teacher and coach at the school. Melanie Phipps, a Freeman alumna from the 2000s and the current principal of Cuyacuson Middle. Billy Reed, a Freeman parent and a graduate from the 1980s. And Jim Sankston, a former Freeman teacher, coach, parent, and the longtime athletic director of the school, in addition to two 12th grade students and a 10th grader. The committee will advise Marshall about whether or not to change the nickname. That's a decision that Marshall intends to make by mid-August. A reminder for those of you who enjoy listening to this podcast, we've got two other ones we invite you to tune into. Most days you can find a new episode of Today in Henrico. It's a brief conversation with a Henrico newsmaker. Today's episode includes... Eric Lebo, he's the director of Henrico County's Community Revitalization Department. And also a new episode of Monday Moms with Chloe Edwards. She is the outreach coordinator for Voices for Virginia's Children. Both guests will talk about their organizations and how they are working in the Henrico community. You can find them by visiting HenricoCitizen.com and clicking under Podcasts. Today's Henrico News Minute has been brought to you by Nathan's Roof Repairs, a small company doing big things. Check them out online at nathansroofrepairs.com or call 273-9200 for a free estimate.